One, addition, one additional announcement is the Clarks Hill area affirming and inclusive United Methodists will have a booth at this year's Clarks Hill Pride event festival, which is on June 29th. If you are interested in volunteering at our booth, please let me know. Most importantly, whether this is your first time or you've been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. And then through his gate with him sitting and his courts with prayers. If you can see him, bless his name. I invite you now to stand as you're able as we sing together in number 547, O Church of God United.
giver of life. We pray for the church throughout the world. Sanctify its life, renew its worship, empower its witness, restore its unity. Remove from our people all pride and every prejudice that dulls their will for unity. Strengthen the work of all those who strive to seek that common obedience that will bind us together. Heal the divisions which separate your children from one another, that they may keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen.
who were enslaved, terrorized by lynching, humiliated by racial segregation, and presumed guilty and dangerous. More than 4,400 black people were killed by racial terror lynching between 1877 and 1950 are remembered there. In his letter from the Birmingham jail, King wrote, wherever the early Christians entered a town, the power structure got disturbed and immediately sought to convict them for being, quote, disturbers of the peace and outside agitators. But they went on with the conviction that they were a colony of heaven and had to obey God rather than man. They were small in number, but big in commitment. They were too God-intoxicated to be astronomically intimidated. They brought an end to such evils as infanticide and gladiatorial contests. Things are different now. The contemporary church is so often a weak and effectual voice with an uncertain sound. It is so often the arch supporter of the status quo. Far from being disturbed by the presence of the church, the power structure of the average community is consoled by the church's silent and often vocal sanction of things as they are. This morning, we hear of a conflict in the early church. Should the Gentile believers be circumcised and keep the law of Moses? After much debate and discussion, Peter stands up and says, Brothers, we know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why be trying to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved just as they are. There's been a lot of talk of unity. And what a wonderful word unity is. But the more we talk about unity, the more contentious it begins to feel. It often becomes talks of unity through peace. It becomes conversations about unity through the right channels. The conversations become, well, they should be happy with what we have given them. The conversation becomes a scriptural debate, moral peacocking, and power grabs. Adolf von Harnack was a liberal theologian. Liberal theology in his time was to try to point the entire gospel through a single claim like God is love. This era fears, feels eerily similar to that liberal theology. The problem was when Germany fell into Nazism. It was Hegel and liberal theology which supplied the philosophical ground for their ideology. Now, I'm not saying that the reconciling movement today and Nazis are comparable because they are not. But the point is that when another theologian, Bart, comes onto the scene, he rails against liberal theology because it assumes that humanity can know enough to point the gospel through a single kernel of the whole husk. It is impossible to push the gospel through a single kernel. 
because our mere human knowledge is insufficient to know the vast nature and fullness of God. And so when any of us on any side of any issue try to push through one kernel, we have missed the point of the gospel. But if we are to be a church that works towards unity and peace, then there are stands that must be taken. If we are to be a church that works towards unity and peace, then we are called to stand against the power structures that continue to prioritize white supremacy and Christian nationalism. If we are to be a church that works towards unity and grace, then we are called to the unconditional love and radical acceptance that Christ demonstrated. If we are to be a church that works toward unity and peace, then we must be willing to recognize the belovedness of those we disagree with. If we are to be a church that works towards unity and peace, then we must pray that God will continue to know our hearts and change them so that we might always act in love. As a meeting this week, where there was significant discussion about what it means to move forward, we have been talking about moving forward for what feels like ages. We have been thinking about the commission on a way that was created in 2016 at General Conference. We've been thinking about a way forward through disaffiliations. We've been thinking about a way forward for inclusion in the United Methodist Church. In his sermon, Catholic Spirit, John Wesley writes, but although a difference in opinions or modes of worship may prevent an entire external union, yet need it prevent our union and affection. Though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike. May we not be of one heart, though we are not of one opinion. Without all doubt, we may. Herein, all the children of God may unite, notwithstanding these smaller differences. These remaining as they are, they may forward one another in love and in good works. And so as we continue to move forward, as we as St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church continue to move forward, we do so with a reminder that no matter what, Christ is with us. We as St. Bethlehem will continue to move forward caring for our community, feeding the hungry, giving aid where we can, Loving one another, breaking bread together. The debates about human sexuality on a denominational level are over. And we in the sanctuary continue to have differing opinions. But what we see in our text from Acts today is that God's grace, the Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ always draw the circle and that no matter what, we as St. Bethlehem will continue to live in to our mission of creating disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our community. And this morning we will gather around the table. We will confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. We will experience the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is at this table that Christ welcomes each of us, without exception. It is a table where you are welcome if this is your first time taking communion or you have been taking communion for years. This is a table where you can bring your questions and your doubts. This is a table where no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, the color of your skin, or who you love, are welcomed, loved, and celebrated. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's auction.
Spirit, on these our gifts, gifts that we humbly offer to you as you have graciously given them to us. We ask that they may go to further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name.
prayers for which we ask for an answer swiftly. Oh God, we lift all of these to you. Continue to call us, continue to empower us through your Holy Spirit. So that we might continue to bring about your kingdom here on earth. We pray these things and all things in your Son's holy name. prepared to come to the table. We are reminded that this is not my table. This is not St. Bethlehem's table. This is not the United Methodist Church's table. This is Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are invited, welcomed, and celebrated. morning we will be taking communion by coming you will be invited to come forward and kneel at the altar where you will be given a piece of bread and the juice. You're invited to then partake in the elements and spend the time in prayer and I will dismiss each group with a blessing. Any money that is left on the altar goes toward our healthy hands fund which goes to assist our neighbors in need. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Bring us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners that proves our love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God.
who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, for people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join there an ending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty all those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us in a covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the people. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ shall come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one love. We who are many are one body, for we all partake in the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time, I invite those assisting with me.
and that wherever we go, Christ is with us. And so go in peace.